Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze these two gears in ANSYS and Abacus. So first we will use ANSYS to analyze these and then we will use Abacus to analyze these and then we will compare both analyses results as well as the, the inputs and how much time it takes. But before we proceed to analysis uh, there are a couple of things you need to do if you are going to have a successful gear analysis. So these gears were imported from Camtra uh, Samanetics gear tracks and these distances as well as everything else was calculated by the software gear tracks and so what I did is that I fixed these two in the space and then I created this sketch where these two should be and now I added the concentric mates so they just get fixed and still be able to revolve around it and then I fixed their mid planes so they, they can still rotate but they don't move out in the space. Now this is very critical because when we are going to solve the contact problem for gears they are always going to give you error if there is something wrong or there is not enough gap or not too, enough, too much penetration. So to have a good analysis you always need, need to have just a little bit of penetration. Just a little bit. If it's too much then it won't make a contact and if it's too less then we would still have problems we would have wrong results anyway so just to be very careful that it, it's not wrong like so it should be barely touching it and not penetrating or there shouldn't be too much gap now this one is gonna make the first contact with it and it's gonna show too high stress on it so I'm just gonna adjust these two maybe maybe it will work yeah so I'm just gonna make it a little bit into it so but never do not be fooled by these these edges the real edges show up when you click hover over it or you click on it and we will see when we are at meshing that how these edges can fool you so one thing you should make sure that you have this image quality at very good and that then you will see that it, it shouldn't be at as straight or edgy as it is now but nevertheless I think we are good to go to the answers and we will start doing it just a bit short uh, but before we check it that nothing is penetrating or nothing has too much gap in it. So our contacts just don't fool us. Okay. Let's move to the ANSYS. In the ANSYS there are two things that are very critical. Fixing these two in the space and making sure that the contact is established. So, and another thing that is very critical is to find out that which of the faces are being in contact. For example, if I just use this contact, this face for the contact, then it would show me, it would keep showing me very high stresses at these edges. And we will, we will check that later on. But for now, let's try with this and we will, we will just have these two faces and maybe we can add these two extra and for this one we won't need it so let's just add these ones extra and we're gonna change it to frictional and I'm gonna make it 0.2 and behavior should be asymmetric now th this is important because we want to make this one drive this one and the target and the contact so we're gonna make sure that the contact is driving the target so we don't have any problems and that's why asymmetric is important here and we're gonna have this 
adjust to touch for the moment but we will see what what happens let's just do it for example no ramping to see what what we get in the contact results so in the mesh I'm still gonna use the linear elements and I'm gonna use this element this thing so it's point two these two faces uh, these all faces and I'm, I'm gonna select these edges so we through the edges we have like four or five divisions so we get don't get too much stress uh, sorry too much too many elements along the edge or through thickness so let's create that mesh and yeah it looks fairly good but so one one yeah you can notice that it's a little bit penetrated into it and that's fine and here it is as well so we can adjust that and check it again if we don't see there if, if we don't see good results in it then we get then we can change this in the CAD by adjusting it and then we can solve again so in the gear it, it is going to be a hit and trial method but you should be you should know what you're doing if you don't know why you should adjust it then you you would just keep trying again and again so let's try and put two of the revolute joints now we're gonna use these as the boundary condition as well and which one we're we gonna use this one and we use rotation and as you can see that it's already rotation Z and magnitude let's say it moves like six degrees uh, that's too less let's say let's make it 12 for now and in the analysis we're going to use large deflections and direct and substep point one i would just use it and so we we are ready to go so we have everything set we have but we haven't checked what is the gap or penetration in the contact so let's just check it It's gonna show you how much gap or penetration we have or what is the status of contact now this is very powerful tool in answer and so it's it's closed and the contact is making or the contact is being established I should say and now we are good to go we are ready to run or maybe let me show you so if we just add adjust to touch then it, it would be gone so let's try with it And as you can see that its status is closed and the penetration is very small. Now we, we can run it. In ANSYS, you can see if the results is converging or not by this force convergence. And you can see that it's, it's moving really smooth and uh, the displacement convergence is here. So we guess like analysis is running cool and uh, there are no problems because no bisection is happening or no problem. So one more thing that I don't like about the answers is that once it's running you cannot change these things for the next solution. So I would have to wait for it until it finishes. And one thing that I like about answers the most is its units. units. You don't have to worry about it. You just switch it, and <laughs> and then you can do anything with it. But if you don't know about, if you don't keep calculating the units in abacus, you're doomed. So wow, that that was fast. And let's see what do we have as results. So we start with. Now this looks crazy though. Yeah. So here you can see that the contact is establishing and the two gears are meshing. And and then we see the next one. So 
like it should be a slip over and this is again but the stresses don't seem very high 0 0.001 tons kg yeah there is something wrong and what could it be maybe the direction of rotation but let's see what is the maximum stress yeah or maybe it's because of the contact well we can guess anything so let's try with it minus 12 and and then we can try with it let's run it and we still have the same result and can you guess why uh, why do we have this, these kind of results over here it, it's still meshing on top of each other and then we still don't have high stresses like what could be wrong here so one thing is very critical is the time step so if the time step is too big then the contacts are not completely being established and the other thing is the revolute joint so do you think that if we had remote displacements and fixed all of the displacements and rotations except for z it would be the same or it, would it be different uh, let's try with it let's try removing the joints and using the remote displacements on both of these so we suppress it and then we suppress this one and use uh, oops this was an edge so we want to use uh, or blow a remote displacement here and then here and now both of these we're gonna fix everything except for the Z but for the driver we're gonna use we're gonna fix it constant and for the one step we're gonna use 12 let's say we're gonna step time step to be 0.01 and then the same is 0.01 now let's try again so let's hope we have so z is free and displacement is z is rotation now let's try again and we still have the same results as we were having before uh, using the shorter or smaller time step and one thing we can see that there is also a small gap that just keeps going on so this is weird and for example this is start of the step and then we just go there and there now this is the gap that we just put there like no ramping or whatever so we just adjust to touch and then it, it would be touching it when we are looking for the results let's try it and then if we still keep getting the same results I'm just gonna move to Abacus to see if we get the same results there too now what we can see here is that we still have this small gap and uh, and I guess it, it will stay there but it can be gone once we adjust our CAD model so if we just see our CAD model there is a little bit of gap and and you know like this is what we just need to adjust and uh, and then we will have good results maybe but let's try with that because like if we also keep getting the same results over there as well